We've got the Rams projected starters on defense heading into training camp. And should the Rams go out there and make another signing to bolster this defense? I think they should. That's coming up next on Locked on Rams. You are Locked on Rams, your daily Los Angeles Rams podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Ramily? And welcome to another edition of Locked On Rams, your daily Los Angeles Rams podcast, covering your two time Super Bowl champion, LA Rams, free and available wherever you get your podcasts. We're also available over on YouTube. So if you want to check out the video version of the show, find us on YouTube, join the party, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. We just passed 7,000 subscribers. It's all thanks to you. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. I've been covering LA sports for over a decade, the Lakers for SI, the Dodgers for Dodgers. Nation, but I'm covering the Rams for Locked On, and today I'm flying solo. My man, Mr. Travis Rogers, he's out today, so I'll be holding it down, but we've got a jam-packed show for you. Later in our third segment, we're going to be discussing some free agent options the Rams could consider if they want to add a veteran to this defense, go out there and sign someone with that newly acquired cap space they received after restructuring Cooper Cup's deal. Then in our second segment, we're going to take a look at the secondary. How does it look? Heading into training camps on the position battles, but in our first segment, we're starting with the starters along the defensive line and the linebacker positions. Now, if you look at this Rams defense as a whole, they struggled last season. They were 22nd overall defense, according to Pro Football Focus. They had 2.2 sacks per game. That was 21st. They had a league low 66 pressures. That's 21 less pressures than the next closest team, the Chicago Bears. So that's not good company, right? That's a team that had a top pick. So you definitely want to improve this defense. And there's a lot of big questions. I mean, a lot of inexperience. You're going to have nine new starters on this defense. Jalen Ramsey's gone. Bobby Wagner's gone. Greg Gaines, Leonard Floyd. A lot of guys that are mainstays along this Rams defense. They are not in the horns this season, and the Rams are going to have to find a way to replace them in short order if they want to contend this season, if they want to make a run at the playoffs. But let's start along that defensive line. Might as well start with the best defensive player on the planet in the universe, Mr. Aaron Donald. Now, if you look at Aaron Donald last season, yes, he had the injury. He was limited to 11 games. He had five sacks. There were some tough Oh, is he falling off? Is the decline starting for Aaron Donald? That is not the case. His PFF grade was still above 90. He's still elite. He's still one of the best players in all of the National Football League. As I always say, if the aliens came down, we were faced with mass extinction. Unless we have one NFL player beat their best player. I'm taking Aaron Donald. He would save this planet, okay? And yes, he's essential. This defense goes as Aaron Donald goes. When it comes to applying pressure, when it comes to stopping the run, he is their guy. He's the cornerstone. He's the foundation. We know that. As long as he's healthy, he's going to continue to be an elite player. Now, the only question I have for Aaron Donald is, he said before this season that when it comes to all these rookies, all these inexperienced players, he just wants to make sure that they, quote, care, that they care about the process and care about winning and go about doing things the right way. So as long as the buy-in is still there, I think he's still going to be engaged, and I still think he's going to have a massive impact. So, looking at the next one, I'm talking about the nose tackle position in Bobby Brown the third. So, when it comes to Bobby Brown, it's about every little step he takes, right? As long as he continues to make progress, as long as he continues heading the right direction, I think there's a guy that could figure it out. I think the light could turn on. I see people out there saying, okay, doesn't have a lot of experience. The snap count is a little low. He played 164 defensive snaps last season. That's six most amongst Rams defensive linemen. So that was low, but let's not forget, Greg Gaines, he was a guy he had under 200 snaps, and then he had 237 snaps, and he jumped all the way to 1,000 in 2021. We saw the leap that he took. So it's definitely possible for all things to come together, and you start to really reach your potential and have a huge impact. If you look at Brown last season, eight tackles, one tackle for for a loss. His depth of tackle was 23rd among defensive linemen. 2.2 stop percentage against the run. That was the second worst in the NFL. A 62.1 run defense grade. A 58.1 pass rush grade. Five pressures on the QB. So not great stats in the small sample size that we had with him. But still, he's a guy that has the potential. And you look at that size. He is a big dude. And the Rams just don't have guys this size. I mean, you're talking about guys 6'4", 324 pounds. That is a lot of meat. And 
and they need him to be a run stuffer up the middle. They just don't have nose tackles that look like that on this team. If you look at the competition. Of course, you got Copley, you got William, you got Murchison. So there are some veterans along that line, guys that have some experience that could definitely help out. But the best case scenario is Brown the third really starts figuring things out. The light turns on, things start to click, and he starts to have a big impact. What can Brown do for you? Hopefully it's a lot. And it's for this Rams defense, not just this year, but in the future. And then at the other defensive end spot, how about Marquise Copeland? Marquise Copeland, I've got him starting, of course, and he's a guy who actually has some experience when you compare him to some of these other guys. I mean, 36% of the snaps, that's how much he played last year. That puts him in the top five of returnings for this Rams defense. Last year in 15 games, he had 31 tackles and a sack with two tackles for a loss. Now they sign him for the minimum, and he's the guy they brought back early on the free agency process. He's not a guy that's going to be a game changer. He's not going to move the needle to that extent, but he does have some experience. He has shown that he can play. Maybe just league average or a little above that, that's going to help this defense compared to the other guys they have at that position. Now, if you look at the inside linebacker spot, very excited for the year that I think Ernest Jones is going to have. Rookie season, we saw what he was able to do at the end. Weeks 8 through 14, at the 16th highest tackling grade among linebackers, according to Pro Football Focus. Yeah, and he graded as the 14th best linebacker in run defense last season, at the 5th best tackling grade, according to Pro Football Focus. At 5.2% missed tackles percentage, that was 5th lowest in the league. So some of the metrics really like him when he's on the field. And I think the potential is there. This is a guy that the ceiling is Pro Bowl. There's no question about that. And and hey, let's not forget, he was a contributor in Super Bowl 56, led the team with six tackles. He also had a sack, had that key stop there on fourth down earlier in the game. So this is a guy that has had success on the game's biggest stage. That definitely gave him a lot of confidence. Now it's just about him putting it all together. We know he's got the green dot. We know he's taking on more of a leadership role this year. I think it's going to be a big year for Ernest Jones. I'm very, very excited, very bullish on Jonesy. And then on the outside linebacker spot, this is very interesting. Of course, you got Michael Hoyt, who's a freak athlete, but he's just very big for the position. He's still listed at 310 pounds. That is not the size. That is, is not the measurable that you see for an outside linebacker, for an edge guy. And what I love about Hoyt is he's one of the few Rams that's carrying some positive momentum into the 2023 season. Last year, 408 total snaps, four and a half sacks in his final six games. And this is a guy who changed positions in the middle of the year. Now, we know he's a smart guy, UDFA out of Brown. So we know he's very intelligent. And I think that's one of the reasons why he was able to make that transition so seamlessly. But he's a great example. When you combine effort, and hustle and strength and athleticism and you combine that with the fact that you're playing alongside Aaron Donald and you're singled up and you're freed up, you can go out there and make plays. So I definitely like him as a situational rusher with the athleticism and strength and I think he can make plays because he's so strong but as far as his size, it's just not the best fit. I think he still fits best on the interior. I think areas where he needs to improve, I look at one, needs to improve his angles and run containment. Look bad several times with those quick cuts. It just didn't fit him. And dude's just kind of making cuts. And yeah, it's tough on your 310 pounds to just match up with a skilled running back or a skilled wide receiver. I mean, the reality is he's a little too big to be an edge. So agility is definitely an issue at times, especially if you're matched up in one-on-one -on -one situations where you have to make the play with a very fast athlete and you just get juked or spun. It's just difficult. Even if you are athletic, if even if you are strong, it just doesn't work out because if you put him on the edge at his size regularly, that just invites teams to run on that side with sweeps and reverses and it really puts you on your heels. So yeah, I want to see him just making plays. I mean, you see some of his technique, the inside slaps, the pull an arm over for a sack against the Seahawks. I mean, there's some flashes that were so impressive last year. So I want to see him rush from the edge situationally and and just kind of mix it up, but I think that's where they are right now. But next, we're going to talk about a rookie that I think is going to have a massive impact for the Rams and later some free agent options they could pursue. That's coming up next on Locked on Rams. First, we're going to talk about our friends over at FanDuel. Make your way to FanDuel because right now, new customers can get a no-sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's $2,500 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. So I use FanDuel. Travis uses FanDuel. All my friends use FanDuel. If you're going to bet online, if you're going to bet through an app, FanDuel is the place to do it. You got baseball heating up. You got the U.S. Open. Although I would not bet on the Dodgers bullpen right now, but definitely use FanDuel. You got great promotion. 
promotions every day, a safe and secure app. You get paid instantly. And the security, like I said, a safe and secure app that goes a long way. You don't have to worry about that with FanDuel. So there's no better place to bet all of your summer sports action on, on America's number one sports book. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and get a no sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. And we are off and running here on Locked On Rams. Thank you for making Locked On Rams your first listen every single weekday, free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And another reminder, we are available over on YouTube. So if you want to check out the video version of the show, find us on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. We just passed 7,000 subscribers. And it's all thanks to you. And a big shout out to our everyday listeners. Thank you for listening to us every single day. You can be an everyday listener too. Join the club. It's free to join. And you won't miss a thing about your Los Angeles Rams. But here in segment number two, we're finishing up with the linebackers. Then we're going to talk about the secondary. And we're going to start with Byron Young. Now, Byron Young, he's been turning heads ever since he stepped foot there in OTAs and mini camp. You got the coaches raving about him. He's impressing his teammates. And this is a guy who has the potential to be a star. This is a guy who has the potential to have an impact in year one. And I think he's going to do just that. Now, if you look at his measurables, 6'2", 250 pounds, 4.43 in the 40, a 154 in the 10 yard split with a 38 inch vertical and 11 foot broad jump. That is why the Rams drafted him in the third round with the 77th overall pick. The upside is off the charts for this guy. And you know his story. This is a guy that was in JUCO. This is a guy who worked at the Dollar General. Hey, well, hey, you would not find Byron Young at the Dollar General. No, you would find him a guy with that speed, with athleticism. He's more of a guy you see at Costco or Whole Foods or someone like that. Not at the Dollar General, okay? This guy has the potential to be great. Now, if you look at what his coach is saying about him, that definitely should make you buy in as well. Here's what Sean McVay had to say about Byron Young. He's doing a good job. We're throwing a lot at him. I think outside linebackers coach Joe Coniglio has done an outstanding job in general, really with a lot of those rookies, whether it's Byron, Oshwan, you look at Nick, three rookie draft picks from the outside linebacker spot, but Byron, incredible athleticism. He looks like he's chiseled out of granite out there, but he plays with a relentless motor. He's conscientious. He's coachable as hell. And I think he's really only going to continue to get better. I like what I've seen really from all three of those young guys. I mentioned Kobe Turner as a bright spot on the interior parts of the line, but I think all of those guys have done a great job. We're going to talk about Kobe Turner next week. So I think he's another guy that could find a role for this team as well in his rookie season, but Byron young. Yeah. The physical gifts that he has, I think like it's going to be impossible to keep this guy out of the lineup. If he's healthy, this is a guy that has the playmaking ability. You know, they need that from that position, a guy that, Hey, he can make plays on the outside and get to the quarterback rush the quarterback and really just bring some athleticism to that position. So I absolutely see him as a starter. I think he's going to be a guy that's going to be in there in day one, having an impact. And then you look at the cornerback position. You got Darion Kendrick, underwhelming rookie season, had a 42.7 pro football focus grade after allowing 39 receptions on 56 targets. The biggest con for him really is speed. You see quarterbacks kind of exploiting him on quick plays, short plays, and that's kind of where he gets worked. He doesn't have the requisite speed to kind of be effective in that ramshell coverage. I mean, that's kind of my big question. Can he be effective in that ramshell coverage with that speed? Or you kind of need to look at maybe another guy there, but Hey, let's see. I mean, He's got his physical. I think he has the ability to do it. It's just a matter of can his speed take the next level. Sometimes we see that in this league. Sometimes we don't. But I think right now you can definitely pencil him in as one of the starting cornerbacks heading into training camp. And then, of course, you got Robert Rochelle. So Robert Rochelle, will he be an outside guy? We'll see. Can he hold it down? I think it's really a make or break year for Robert Rochelle. If he can't start on this team, I think it's kind of unlikely that he's ever going to have an impact in this league. It's a gold opportunity to take this bull by the horns and just run with it. Just make this year the year where he really just realized that potential. I mean, he's 6'2", 32 and a half arm span, 4'3", 4'4", speed. So measurables, he has a lot to like. I mean, size, speed. I mean, you would think that he could put it all together. In the 2021 draft, he registered the second overall among quarterbacks in the 2021 combine in his athleticism grade, according to NFL Next Gen stats. So you saw what the Rams saw in him, raw potential. And that sometimes is what you want because then you can mold it. And it's just a matter of kind of molding it into their form and him just going out there and finding a way to improve his technique because that's really the con with him. It's the technique. Sometimes you see him getting turned around, the backpedaling issues. 
issues making transitions, especially when receivers are getting into their break. So for him, it's the technique and trying to improve upon that. And the good thing is you can teach one thing and you can't the other. You can't teach 6-2. You can't teach 4-3, four, 4-4 four, four speed. We know he has that. It's just about getting the technique right. So I definitely think he has the ability to get it done. Just a matter of just realizing it all and just finding a way to make it happen for himself this season. And I definitely think that he absolutely can. And the next at the nickel spot, you've got Kobe Durant. Now, Kobe Durant's another guy that's a prime candidate to have a breakout season this year. He flashed last year. We saw big plays. You saw the pick six he had against the Denver Broncos. This is a guy who has a lot of confidence and he's just continuing to get better. Only question I have is do you consider moving him to the outside and having THT, Trevez Hodges, Tomlinson play that nickel spot? Because we saw last season teams were dinking, dunking this Rams defense. Too much death by paper cuts, too much on the quick game. THT is a guy that's built to stop that. He's aggressive, he's feisty, and come up and make plays. A little handsy at times, but still, I think he's built for that. And if he shows that tenacity, that fight, that aggressiveness in training camp, and he wins over his coaches and he earns a role, I think it's going to be tough to keep him off the field. I think he definitely has the potential to have an impact next season. I do hope that, and we'll talk about this in the next segment, they possibly go out there and probably potentially bringing a veteran cornerback. I think that's something they could consider doing, but right now that's what you're looking at, the cornerback position. And the next at the safety spot, you got Jordan Fuller. Now we've seen his progression through the years. His rookie season, he had 60 tackles and three interceptions in 12 games. And in 2021, he was the green dot guy there. And then he was only limited to three games in 2022 to that hamstring injury. So that really set him back. But hey, he's a guy that is definitely... Moving into this year with positive momentum, a guy that is really ready to come back and have an impact and get back to where he was back in 2021. I think this is a guy that's going to be one of the leaders, of course, on this defense, a guy that has been very vocal during minicamp and OTA. So this is a guy that I think that this defense, Raheem Morris, is going to trust upon to go out there and have a big role if this team's going to be successful on defense. And at the other safety spot, you've got Russ Yee. So Russ Yee's not too many options there at the safety spot. You still got a lot of youth there with Quentin Lake. You got Fuller got yeast. I mean, combine those three 267 snaps, 113 by yeast, 91 by Fuller and 63 by Lake last year. So not a lot of returning experience based on the season prior, but still yeast is going to be their guy unless they go out there and pick someone up. But yeah, on paper, this Rams defense, they're projected to be one of the worst in the NFL by a lot of projections. You got Aaron Donald, Ernest Jones, Jordan Fuller. Those are the only full-time starters that are returning. So that's a lot of unproven talent. That's a lot of guys that have to step up and just earn their mark in this league. So we'll see if they're able to do it. I do think that if this team wants to make a serious run at the playoffs this season and get to 10 wins or more, they should go out there and trade for some pieces on defense. Who are those pieces? Who are some guys they could pursue? That's coming up next on Locked on Rams. And before we get to our final segment here on Locked On Rams, just want to say thank you for making Locked On Rams your first listen every single day, free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And another reminder, we are available over on YouTube. Just hit 7K subscribers. Go over there, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. And a special shout out to our everyday listeners. We can't tell you enough how much we appreciate you for making Locked On Rams your first listen every single day. You can join the Everyday Listeners Club too. Highly recommend. Membership is free. You don't have to pay a thing and you'll know everything there is to know about your Los Angeles Rams. You won't miss a thing. But here in our final segment, should the Rams go out there and look to make a trade to bolster this defense? They just restructured Cooper Cubs' deal. They have over $10 million to work with, $10.4 million to work with. You just went out there and you signed to Sony Michelle. You also previously signed a Tyler Johnson, a receiver, receiver Demarcus Robinson, guys that might not make the team, guys that might just be cam bodies. Yes, there's a chance that all three of those guys could have an impact, but still, I think if you look at the defense, if you look at these glaring needs, the voids they need to fill, I look at three positions. Edge rusher, cornerback, and safety. And are there guys out there that you could get for a pretty affordable, pretty reasonable price that could help this defense win this season? I think the answer is absolutely yes. We dropped a video last week about Justin Houston. I think he's the guy that I would look at, a veteran, somebody can go out there, have an impact on these rookies. He's still very productive, even at age 34. We talked about John Johnson in the past. I think John Johnson, he's a guy that spent four years with this Rams team, 
He's definitely a guy that knows the system. You can plug right in. And this is one of the most inexperienced position groups on this team, the safety position. Well, if you sign John Johnson the third, but there's been a lot of rumors that he was going to end up with the Chargers, but he just still hasn't ended up there. He hasn't signed with them. And I still think that makes a ton of sense. I mean, that gives Russ Yees, Quinn Lake, and Jason Taylor the second more time to develop and you more time to go out there and learn before you plug him in and throw him into the fire. And I think John Johnson there makes a ton of sense. You look at another cornerback, Troy Hill. Of course, he knows the scheme. He has the experience. He's another guy that can mentor Durant, Rochelle, Tomlinson, another guy that knows the system, could come in and instantly have an impact right away, and you just wouldn't have to worry about teaching him. And I think in year one, if the cost you could get him at is reasonable, which it would be, I would love to go that route as well. Like I said, you got Justin Houston, nine and a half sacks, 17 quarterback hits in just 14 games, a guy that could come in right away establish some rapport with Aaron Donald. Some of these guys be nice to have another veteran when you consider how much inexperience, how many rookies. Look, if you go to the camp, you need some camp counselors, right? You'd be a camp counselor for this team. Then if you look at the outside linebacker position as well. You go at Melvin Ingram. Right now you got Michael Hoy, you got Daniel Hardy, you got Byron Young, Nick Hampton, and some of their edge rushers. But hey, that's not a group that is going to give you too much confidence. When you look at the inexperience, Melvin Ingram, six sacks, 10 QB hits, a guy that was a part-time player for the Dolphins, even at 34 years old, he was out there making plays. And I think with an increased role on this team, he could make plays. You got Kyle Van Noy. He's still out there. He can play off the ball as a linebacker alongside Ernest Jones and give some positional depth there. So he's the guy, five sacks in each of the last four seasons, recording anywhere from 46 to 69 tackles in his last four years. So he still remained productive. So there are moves to be made. There are guys you can look towards to help this team. And like I said, it's those three positions, edge rusher, cornerback, and safety. You can't have all three of them with the inexperience and expect to have success. Look, there's a reason why there's experts out there, and the experts have all pinned this defense to be one of the worst in the league. And the reason for that is nine of the 11 starters are going to be new. So you only have a few returning stars, a few guys you can count on. So I definitely think if the Rams are serious about winning this season, they will use some of that money to get a veteran, to get a guy in there that can help this team. And I wouldn't roll out a big swing trade. Like we talked, Daniil Hunt I mean, we talked about that. If the big swing trade is out there on the market, that's always a possibility with this club. But I definitely think this franchise, depending on how they look during preseason, during the start of the year, I think that, hey, if you have a veteran, it signals that they are not going to try to finish with the worst record, which I never thought they were in the first place. But sometimes you can look to be tanking without actually tanking when your roster construction, when your roster build isn't where it is. And if you want to not win games, you have a lot of inexperience. So if they go out there and sign someone, that tells me that this team is still all in on the season, which I can tell you from people that I've talked to that they are, that they do want to contend this year, that they do think they're going to surprise people and win seven to 10, maybe 10 plus games and make a run at the playoffs because this NFC, they're not a juggernaut. You can absolutely make a run in this NFC, and I expect the Rams to go out there, sign another guy, give Aaron Donald some more help, and maybe you make the playoffs and you surprise some folks. Because like I said, winning 10 games this year, making it to the playoffs, that would feel like a win, right? That would feel like you accomplished something this season. That would have been an accomplishment in 2021 when it was Super Bowl or bust, right? But this season continues, considering it's a little bit of a gap year, a little bit of a transition year. In 2024, you get back to being a Super Bowl contender. I think 10 wins would go a long way into showing the culture of this team how, hey, we don't lay down. We don't tank for anyone. We're not trying to get Caleb Williams. No, we're going to try to win games and wear those horns with pride. But that's going to do it for this episode of Locked On Rams. Thank you for making Locked On Rams your first listen every single weekday. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. And until next time, whose house is Locked On Rams house?